Nice to see you, Mike. Thank you very much for uh, coming. It's been an interesting week, I guess. Tell me about uh, your thoughts on the convention, the Republican uh, Party out there. I didn't watch it. Didn't watch it? <laughs> I was happy, happy to stay home. Yeah. Instead of going out there. Sure, because... I would think so. Hmm? I would think so. Why would you think so? Because it seemed to me like not much of real interest was taking place. You got it. Yeah. Ted Koppel was right. Yeah, that's right. Ted Koppel packed up all his stuff and, and moved went out. home. Yeah. You know why? Because he was going in the dumper against you. Oh, yeah. No, seriously. Yeah. Big, you know, nobody was watching out there, so he figured he, he needed to come back east and do, get some ratings. Now, when did it happen and why did it happen that uh, conventions became so much less? than what they used to be. I can remember when I was a kid. Oh. I can remember in 1968 watching you at work when there was stuff going on. Oh, you bet your life. Yeah. There was a, actually, the first convention I ever covered was in 52 in Chicago, Eisenhower against Adlai Stevens. You didn't know who was going to be nominated, mm -hmm. first of all. Right. Chances are it was going to be Eisenhower, but there was still some doubt about it. But there was, there was a kind of excitement and energy, and there were stories to find out and sources to use. Today, it simply is not so. It's all worked out ahead of time by the primaries. I right. mean, it's, what has it been, four months since yeah. Bob Dole has been uh, nominated? Back, back in, I mean, has won the primaries, and then you knew that he was going to be nominated, and of course, uh, Bill Clinton, uh, unless he goes to jail, is, is going to be <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. But, but, but why did it happen that now all it is is reinforcement of some synthetic image? That's all it is, uh, constructing and reinforcement of some load of crap. <laughs> Ideologic crap. That's all it is, Mike. I couldn't disagree with you more. <laughs> you know, all, all the complaining that goes on among journalists about the fact that there's no story and so forth, no, there's not much of a story. Right. But it is an interesting exercise to tee the, see the two guys mm -hmm. who are going to be the Republican candidates. Mm -hmm. and, and they're not doing it to entertain us. No. They're doing it to tell the folks out there, here's, here's who we are. Here's who we are. For us. But I, I'm t I was taken again this time in looking at this affair, uh, as I am many, many times. The people, and nothing against the Republicans, nothing against Dole and, and Kemp and, and his wife and uh, all of those folks out there. Nothing against them. But it just seems like, well, wouldn't it be great if we had somebody who really, really was a compelling orator who could stand up and captivate not only the crowd in the hall, but the country as well. And to me, it just seems like those kind of folks ain't going into politics. They're hosting talk shows. Am I right? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. First night of the convention. It was a fascinating convention. Nancy Reagan just had you by the throat that she was, she was so... <laughs> yeah. uh... it, was, no, it was interesting to see Nancy Reagan, that's right. It was. Yeah, it, it was, was interesting. very moving. Yeah. And then, I've never heard a more effective speech than uh, Colin Powell did. Exactly, but is he running for anything? No. No, that's right. So what, what good is it if we have an effective sp speaker playing golf all day, you know? He's sitting sure. in the house, he's being an effective speaker of water in the lawn. Well, that some, don't work. Somebody said, somebody said, well, somebody said, everybody has said forever that the last good speaker was Ronald Reagan, and there's no doubt about it. Yeah, well, people and really, Bill, really liked that guy, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. And then, you know why? Because he knew who he was. You, you knew who he was, he knew who he was, and there was a confidence built as a result. We're never quite sure that Bill Clinton knows who he is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, he's going to jail, you say. You heard it right here. Mike Wallace says Bill Clinton's going to jail. Uh, he said nothing of the sort. I, I want to show Bill no, no, before wait, we go to wait, commercial. Wait, wait, All right, fine, have you go to commercial. Sure, go ahead, whatever. All right. <laughs> and I'm not sure, and I'm still not sure that Bob. Dole knows who he is. Did you That's, notice... I see, I think you're right about that. I think you're exactly right about Did that. Did you notice last night, he would say something quite moving and quite serious and look like that, and then all of a sudden, this painted-on, puppet-like smile, yeah. it's what Richard Nixon used to do in sure. the same way. I mean, it's a, a kind of a phony smile, an artificial smile, because yeah. he's not genuinely comfortable in what he's doing. Or not telling the truth, in Nixon's case. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I, I wanted to, um, 
I wanted to show that that the the, the remarkable footage of you in the '68 well, convention. Well, Let me just see. For? Uh, I, I don't know yet. I don't honestly. I don't know yet. Me too. I don't know yet. Me too. Because uh, I, I, all I'm really concerned about is raising the speed limits. That's really all. And I haven't heard nothing about it. I've heard nothing about it. So the tape now. Now. But, the, but, but, you know, Clinton's just kind of big and goofy. You know, he's just kind of big and goofy. And you think, you know, you look at Dole and you think, here's a guy who really is a decent, honest man. He's a decorated war hero and a decent guy and a lifelong legislator. But he's just, you know, he's not quite, and, and, and Clinton just, <laughs> you know. <laughs> is there any more waffles? Except that. Except any more that. egos? Hillary, we got any egos? Um, Except that I, I, I really do believe that Bill Clinton is looking somehow more presidential. I'll give you that. In the last couple of years, he's kind of grown into being able to present himself as, here I am, symbolically the president. And I think in, yeah. now, in this day, that means everything, doesn't yeah. it? Uh, when you are you going to grow into... Uh, uh, oh, stop uh, it, Mike. Come okay. on, stop it. Uh, are we... Are we... Oh, we're now... Okay, I want to show this tape, though, but we have to do a commercial here. We'll be right back with Mike Wallace. I was talking about the, uh, the, the footage, the videotape, the film, whatever it is, of you... Chicago, 1968. Set the stage for the people, and then we'll take a look at the film and talk about it. 1968, Chicago, middle of Vietnam, trouble, and there was uh, there was hell to pay in the streets. I mean, I mean really, really trouble. This country was coming apart. That's was correct. breaking. Was cracked. Was pulling apart. That's correct. And Lyndon Johnson had just decided that he was not going to run mm -hmm. once again. And after a while, he finally acknowledged that maybe Hewitt Humphrey is the guy who was going, and it was going to be Humphrey versus Richard Nixon. And Grant Park, Lincoln Park, all over Chicago. I'm serious. It was as tough a time as I can imagine politically in my lifetime. Right. It was frightening. It was just frightening, especially for, for a person like me. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And you just, you, it could have gone any way, and you just were scared all the time. Right. And now you're at Convention Hall in Chicago. Incidentally, you realize the first Democratic convention in Chicago since 1968 is going to start taking place next That's week. That's where Clinton goes to jail. <laughs> I almost went to jail. I did. As a matter of fact, we I... Ha we have the film here, and, uh, and I don't know, should you tell people what, what it is? I, it's uh, very famous at this point, but tell them what we're going to see here. What we're going to see is, is uh, the New York delegation, a fellow by the name of Alex Rosenberg, who was a Gene McCarthy delegate. And the cops were very, very careful about who they let on the floor, and he didn't have his proper identification with him. And so they, were, they yanked him off the floor. Mm -hmm. And I, I followed it out. And I said, what do you mean? You, you've seen him. He's in this delegation. So you're doing your job as a reporter. And they say, mind your own business. Yeah. And I said to the cop, it is my business. I mean, this is, this is the public. There are no cameras out here, but this is my business. And so what, what happened was a fist fight. Oh, man. Here we go. From the uh, floor of the 1968 Democratic Convention in Chicago. Roll it. There seems to be some kind of... Uh battle going on over uh, there. Yes, there is Carolina. a battle going on. If you can get over there, we can see it directly under our booth here. They're carrying a man out bodily. Who is the man? I don't know who it is. Where is the man? Who is the man? Who is the man? Who is the man? Dan, let's let Mike. Whoa, Mike has just been shoved down the floor there. Mike, get your... The young man with glasses and the... But uh, they sure gave you a rough shove. What's that? Uh, Dan Shore. I'm fine. Dan? <laughs> I'm fine. As his credentials okay. drilled into his forehead. All right. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. So, so uh, what happened is the, the, the cop said, now you get out of here, Wallace. Just, you, 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 this is not... I said, this is a public place. He said, I'm not going to... And so I leaned over and I said to the commander... <laughs> Why are you so upset, Commander? Uh -huh. And he hit me so hard. Really? In Both the you. chin. Oh, my God. I mean, he right really did. Boom. And, and, and I was so taken aback. And, the, and his buddies said to me immediately, you're under arrest. And this is the commander. I think this is, this the, is the commander. Gannon. And I'm a plain sure. clothes guy wow. who were hustling me off the floor. They take me upstairs uh, to the pokey, which is, a, yeah. you know, a, a kind of... Uh, we know what the pokey is. <laughs> Temporary whatever. And, and they, they weren't going to let me. I didn't know what they were going to do yeah. with me. And suddenly Mayor Richard Daly Everything showed up. Everything was scary. Nothing made sense in those days. Yeah. And for years yeah. and years, Mike used this as his Christmas card. It was very nice. <laughs> very nice. Mayor Richard Daly and the president of CBS News negotiated for my release. I washed my face and was 
back on the floor. Interesting moment in American politics and journalism. And another interesting moment, Sunday night, right here on CBS, President Clinton, I believe, on He's going 60 to minutes. do his take on the Republican convention with Dan Rather. Dan Rather, who used to be on 60 Minutes, yep. and who's a good pal of, uh, of the Clintons, is going to be talking. As a matter of fact, you got any questions that Dan should put to uh, Bill Clinton? Well, you know, the obvious question that everybody keeps asking, we see the guy jogging 10, 15 miles day after day after day after day after day. Why can't he drop even a pound? <laughs> Mike Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. Mike, always a pleasure. Keep up the good work.